Welcome to the penultimate 26 minutes Dakar. It's crunch time. Comma versus Dupre, Spain versus France. Who will take the crown? In the cars, the fight with the sand of Peru continues, but just how will Petter and Roma struggle? We take a ride with some of our brave, committed racers as they blast through the Peruvian sands on inside. In Dakar people, we talk to our helicopter cameraman about the most incredible job in the world. And in Legend, we learn from Volkswagen that power is nothing without reliability. All the news, all the action on this all new 26 minutes Dakar, Nazca to Pisco. Just two days left of the 2012 Dakar, and it's as close as ever. Comma got lost early on, but then Depre got stuck in the mud. Comma got back the advantage yesterday. Three wins all. It's the most intense duel in history. We came in a fight until the very end and to try and win. That's what we'll do. It's game on with Frenchman Depre holding the upper hand. I will start a few minutes behind Mark and we can say that I guess I have the advantage. Just 300 kilometers of racing to go after 40 hours flat out. De Prez will start ahead of Coma, but who will arrive at the finish with one hand on the trophy? Between Nazca and Pisco, competitors will have clocked over 8,000 kilometers, but there's still no let up in the challenge. Another 275 kilometers of dunes should keep the results fluid on this penultimate day. For the top two, serious pressure. Mark Comer and Cyril Dupre going head to head for the penultimate time. I think that Cyril's in a really good position. Dupre has set off fourth on the road with a clear objective to catch Mark Comer. That way he knew he would have six minutes in hand, surely enough to win the rally with just 30 kilometers tomorrow. Having passed Jordi Villadoms and Juan Barreda, by waypoint two, he was just 50 seconds behind. At refueling, Mark Comer had seen the pace of Dupre and needed to respond, which he did. Just 50 kilometers later, he had found three minutes on his rival, which translated to just a 30 second gap in the overall. It was extremely close. It seemed the prayer had had a slight wobble and it wasn't the situation he wanted to be in. Taking off first tomorrow with such a small gap for the Spaniard to chase him down, not good at all. But then at kilometre 207, disaster for Mark Comer. He strayed two kilometres off track and then stopped. He wasn't far from the good track, but how much time would he lose? Meanwhile, third in the standings, Helder Rodriguez had a day to remember. On pace with Silda Prayer throughout the stage, having started seventh bike. In the overall standings, he's a lone soldier, having been safe in third since Consalves picked up a penalty. Today, he took his first stage win since stage seven last year. In the fight between the private KTMs, the last two days have been advantage Bordone Ferrari, with Jordi Villadom's week two results far exceeding his week one performance. Today, he stayed with Depre once passed and registered the third best time. This combination will be one to watch in 2012, with Faraz Gill lining up seventh in the overall standings as well.
Stefan Spitko had benefited from not changing his KTM engine and therefore briefly sat ahead of Benidorm's in the general standings. But that same day he pulled an arm muscle and really hasn't been the same since. Today he finished 10 minutes down and slips ever closer to the edge of the top five. He's riding without doctor's permission. Well, what about that battle at the front of the field? Deprez was the first to arrive at the finish, closely followed by Jordi Villadoms. But what would be the gap? I'm not one of those who rejoice at the problems of my teammates or my adversaries, even more when it's Mark Comer who has had a problem, obviously. I had to do my race since this morning. I was pushing a lot, and I knew that he would have to do the same thing. Mark Comer came in six and a half minutes later. The Spaniard lost 13 and a half minutes. He'd been carrying a gearbox problem since the start. During all the rally, we fought. We did our best every moment. And today, it was a small problem. Oh, the disappointment is that we could not fight. We did not have any option. So I'm really disappointed for that. The prayer and coma shook hands. Teammates forever. So Helder Rodriguez takes a stage victory just 47 seconds ahead of Cyril Dupré, Jordi Villalom's third, Bereda in fourth, having a great rally with Conselves in fifth. Overall, that means Dupré now leads Coma by 11 minutes. Rodriguez one hour off that with Villadoms and Svitko rounding out the top five. Thomas Maffei had the upper hand today, taking off fourth behind Sonic and the Patronelli brothers. And the Argentine made best of that position to secure his third spot on the Dakar. A victory today. Alejandro Patronelli's triumphant journey to glory continues on this 13th special. He took it nice and easy, fully focused on the main task to win a second Dakar in a row. The Argentine finished third today. For Marcus Patronelli, the main goal is to see his family triumph again on this Dakar. The elder brother opened the way for Alejandro and eventually finished fourth. And former Olympic weightlifter Sergio Lafuenta won the first two stages of the Dakar. Since then, he's dropped down the order but finished second today. Coming next in the cars, Stefan Pederhansel versus Nani Roma. 20 minutes in it, who'll take victory? C'est bon, c'est bon, c'est bon. Et là, ça va descendre. Je vais faire un S en descente. Danger 2.
Shadow Blanco Dunes, one of the highlights of the Dakar so far, but where so many got stuck on stage 12. I was only here just short of the day. We were here crossing the dunes and tried to drive through this dune, but we didn't have enough speed and the truck fell on its side. The DAF 514 of Van der Heuvel was eventually helped out by another DAF machine. And like often on the Dakar, things turn around rather rapidly. This time, Peter van der Bosch crashed his machine onto its side. And guess who came along to help? Your towing rope's better than ours. Okay? It eventually took two trucks to put the DAF back on track. And once back on four wheels, the time had come to start repairing. With the help of some Peruvian fans, now that's true Dakar spirit. Oh, close there, close. 